Hi, this is Alex Fernandez with Bud and Doug Walters Auto Sales in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Today I'll be doing a video going over the primary features inside of this 2014 Toyota 4Runner Limited. I'll begin by talking about the touchscreen here on the dash, along with the dials and the buttons along either side of it. We'll then work our way down to the climate control, and then to the center console here with some of the switches we have there. Next we'll go to the steering wheel, the buttons on it the stalks behind it, along with the gauge cluster, some switches here to our left side, and finally some switches we have up above. Starting with the touch screen here, this is where we'll interact with things like our uh, audio, our navigation, pairing up a phone, and our backup camera. You'll see we have physical buttons along the sides of the screen here, and this is also a touch screen display as well. The page we're looking at right now is the home page. As you see here in the top left, we access that just by pressing that home button there. Whenever we're in a different function or on a different screen, pressing that home button will always bring us back to this display here. And this gives us a snapshot view of our audio, our phone, and our navigation. And we can access any one of those functions simply by pressing on its slot there. Please proceed to the highlighted route, then the route guidance will start. Going to the navigation, we can access that either by pressing that maps display there, or we can also go through apps and navigation there, and that opens it as well. You'll see it opens a map display, and we can press destination then to plug in where we're going, whether we use an address points of interest, previous destinations if you've already entered some in before, and you can also search by an intersection and a couple other methods. If we choose address, you simply have to select the state that you're going to be wanting to navigate to, and then pick the city, type that in, and then it'll have you fill in the street address and the house number as well. Pressing this back here on the top right, you'll see we have some presets along the bottom. We have a home preset and then five uh, generic presets. You can save state or uh, save destinations that you'll visit regularly in those preset slots, so they're easily accessible to you. Moving to the next function, we'll go to audio. We can press apps and go here. We can also push this audio button on the left side. And this shows that we're listening to, in this case right now, FM radio. We have volume on the left side and power simply by pushing that dial. And then we have our tune dial here on the right side and then seek buttons along that side there. To change between AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth, CD, etc., simply press that source button in the top right and you'll see the menu here giving us the different options of audio sources that are available, and simply press the one you'd like to access. Along the left-hand side of the screen here is the presets list for the radio. This list can be mixed and matched with AM, FM, and satellite stations if you subscribe to satellite radio, of course. To set a preset, simply press and hold, and wait for the beep, and you'll see that that station is now saved into that preset slot. You can mix and match those, and for that reason, they give you 36 possible slots so you don't run out. Up at the top, we have the options button, which shows us if there are any information from the station, such as song name or artist name. We also have high definition radio, which we can toggle on and off, and our scan button as well. If we go back along the bottom, we have station list, which will compile a list of stations in the area and display it on a list that you're able to scroll through and, and choose the stations from that list. You can do that as a different way just to uh, see the stations in your area if you're driving in an unfamiliar place or anything like that. I'll let that finish doing its thing here for just a second. You'll see then we can now sort by genre as well, so it's able to categorize some of those stations in there for us by genre, or we can just look at all of them and see the 
primarily available stations in the area. We have a pause button here because we do have the ability to play pause, rewind, and if we've paused fast forward, live radio. Functions basically like a, a TiVo or a DVR for the radio. So if there's a commercial starting, you can pause it at the beginning of the commercials and then fast forward through them if you wanted to. We have the sound settings here. And you'll see we have bass, mid-range, and treble along with our fade and balance settings there. Moving to the next function, we're going to go to the phone. We can push that phone button up at the top there. You'll see we get a message that there are no phones paired, and it's asking if we would like to add one now. We're going to press no just for the time being. If we were adding a new device, we would press yes on that prompt and then walk through the setup steps on our compatible hands-free device by going to your settings and then under your Bluetooth settings looking for the vehicle itself. Pressing this apps button, we've talked about navigation, audio, and phone. This messages section would pertain to um, pairing up a phone. If the phone is compatible, it's able to display and read out your text messages when they come through. Setup gives us the settings for the different features of the vehicle here. Traffic information, you'll see we have, right now we're indoors, so we're not getting any information or any data but that would show you um, traffic information, weather, again, we're indoors, so we don't have the signal available to display that information right now. Maintenance section, you're able to, if you'd like to, set reminders for specific maintenance items here. And you can uh, set the intervals that you'd like those to be set or reminded of them needing to be done. And then we have some additional functions here on the second page, which goes through, a lot of these are gonna be through either um, satellite radio or through Toyota's Entune app. Uh, if you're welcome to use that if you'd like to. Moving down to the climate control now, we have dual zone climate control. Driver's side is here, passenger side is here. You'll see the display shows driver temperature and passenger temperature along with the fan location and fan speed. We adjust that fan speed with the rocker switch in the middle and then the location of the air simply by pressing the button we'd like to use. On the right side we have our air conditioning, our recirculate, and then our front defroster and rear defroster along with heated side view mirrors. This button right in the middle turns that climate control off altogether. And then we have a button here within auto which is lets you set the temperature and then it takes care of the fan speed and the vent location for you. And on the passenger dial here, we have dual mode, which means you can change the driver and passenger temperatures independently of each other without them affecting each other. If that mode is turned off, the driver's dial will control both zones for you. Down below we have a USB port and auxiliary port, a 12 volt power outlet there, along with our heated and cooled seats. So simply press that dial to pop it open and rotate it to the position you'd like it to be. Looking here at this dial, this controls the four-wheel drive system of the 4Runner. This 4Runner is a full-time four-wheel drive system. You'll see we have four-wheel high full-time essentially is what that's selling us here. And that indicator shows we are in that position. This is what you would drive around in on a daily basis year-round. If you were to get into anything a little more substantial as far as snow or sand or mud or dirt or anything like that, that would put you into uh, four low basically. And then we have a full four low, which does require us to actually push that unlock button as well as push the dial down. And that would only be used in uh, extreme off-road situations um, deep mud, snow, sand, dirt, whatever the case might be. Um, certainly not on a dry road or not in daily driving. For most people, this full-time four-wheel high position will do everything that you need it to and get you through whatever it is you're driving through. Looking back now at the center console here, we have a switch for the power 
rear window. You see that you can raise and lower that there in case you had to load something in the back or you just want some additional airflow in the vehicle. Looking at the steering wheel, we have buttons here to answer or decline and hang up an incoming call along with the voice command button to tell the vehicle to place a call to a contact or specific number. We have the display button here, which will cycle through some information in that gauge cluster. Fuel economy, digital speed, things like that. We have our cruise control down here. And to activate that, simply press the end to turn the cruise on. You'll see a green icon appear in the gauge cluster there when it's on. Once it's been turned on, push that stock down to set the speed. Once it's been set, click up to accelerate, click down to decelerate, and pull towards you for cancel, at which point you could then click up to resume. On the left side of the wheel, we have volume controls here for their audio. A mode button, which when pressed will cycle us between AM, FM, satellite, Bluetooth, whatever else is available to us. If we hold it down, it functions as a mute button. This control pad here allows us to through, use our audio functions. So the left and right arrows will be seek buttons, and the up and down arrows will cycle through your presets there. And then you'll notice we also have a back button. In case we were in a particular menu here, we can push that back button on the steering wheel to go back to the previous screen. Behind the wheel, we have our stocks for our windshield wipers on the right side. Click that stock up for a single swipe and then down for the intermittent position and we can adjust the speed here. We then have low speed and high speed. Rear wiper, rotate the end of the stock here. We have the intermittent position, and the on position there. To do the spray for the front windshield, simply pull that stock towards you and to do the spray for the rear, twist that stock either all the way down to the bottom position or all the way up to the top position and hold it for as long as you like that spray to go. On the left side, we have the stock controlling the headlights, fog lights, blinkers, and high beams. This vehicle does have automatic headlights. They're in that position right now, so they'll come on during the day as kind of running lights, and at night, you'll have, your full headlights will come on as needed. We also have fog lights, which we can toggle on and off with this ring here. To use your brights, push the stock away. To turn them on, pull towards the flash, and your blinkers are there as well. Over to our left, we have our mirror adjustments. Simply choose which mirror you'd like to adjust and then use the control pad to move it. We have the brightness adjustment for the backlighting of all of our interior lights, in case things are too bright or too dim for you. And then we have our parking sensors here. And you can toggle that on or off and you'll see when you got close to an object, whether pulling forwards or backing up, the vehicle would beep at you as that item or object got closer to you or you got closer to it. Down below we have our heated windshield wipers here. We have our powered running boards. They're in the auto position which means they'll open when the doors are open and close when the doors are closed. We can also put those to the off position so that they don't come out if we don't want to use them. The last button there gives us the power for the uh, power inverter that's actually present in the rear of the vehicle. There is a um, full three-prong outlet. And we have the ability to run when idling 400 watt output and when driving 100 watt output through that outlet. On the door here we have our window switches, our door locks, our window locks, and then you'll see our door handle just below. Looking up above we have three programmable garage door opener buttons. You're able to program your garage door remote to use one of these buttons instead, and that way you can leave the remote at home and just use these buttons for a little cleaner experience. You have your dome light switch for the doors. So if the doors are opened, the dome lights will turn on and they'll shut off when the doors are closed. To turn dome lights on manually, simply press them as needed. We have controls for the sunroof to slide it open or closed and to tilt it up or down. And we have some buttons here for the turning off the traction control, which is on by default. We have A-Track, which is uh, Toyota's a little bit more off-road oriented traction control system. And then DAC, which stands for Descent Assist Control, which functions as a way for you to uh, 
uh, descend a steep grade or steep hill without having to ride the brake pedal. Uh, again, in more of an off-road type situation. Lastly, we have an SOS button through Safety Connect, which is a um, subscription-based service from Toyota. Those are the primary features of this 2014 Toyota 4Runner Limited. If you have any questions, please refer to us at waltersautos.com or feel free to call 269-375-7008. Thank you.